All right, so let's return to the second law just one more time. What we want to do now is just look at the right-hand side of the equation, the mass times acceleration. What we're trying to do is look at the relationship again between force and acceleration. Now, mass is a scalar quantity. It's a positive number. It doesn't have a direction. But acceleration does have a direction. It's a vector. You should remember that from kinematics. But the direction of the acceleration vector has to be always the same as that of the net force vector. Think about it. Mass is a positive number. Therefore, if the force is negative, the acceleration is negative. If the force is positive, the acceleration is positive. So if you think of it in terms of norths and souths, or easts and wests, or lefts and rights, these will always be going in the same direction. Now that we've finished our diversion to look at the direction of acceleration relative to the direction of force, let's return to our problem, our little example that we were working on. Recall that we had two forces acting on a body, both in the same direction, one with 20 newtons of force, the other with 30, and that the net force that resulted was 50 newtons, and that it was to the right. Now we need to find its acceleration. So let's go ahead and use what we know about Newton's second law and the direction information that we found before. We had force as a vector time is equal to mass times acceleration as a vector. Again, we can rearrange things just as we did before. Dividing by m on both sides, we get a is equal to the net force divided by m. And our net force, as we calculated before, was 50 newtons. It was to the right. I'll use a plus sign. And the mass of the object is 5 kilograms. Fifty divided by five is ten. Again, it's positive. And newtons divided by kilograms, as you may recall, is meters per second squared. So this is our acceleration here. Notice that the sign is positive, meaning that it's going to the right. And now we'll have an opportunity to try a few problems on our own. So far, we've talked about force and acceleration as vectors, but only in one dimension. Let's have a look at what happens in two dimensions. So in this uh, diagram, we have a free body, which this time we've described as a square. I'm going to give it a mass. I'm going to give it two kilograms. All right. And there are three forces acting on that body, F1 pointing upward, F2 pointing downward, and F3 pointing to the right. We've also got an acceleration which is pointing to the right. So the acceleration has a rightward component, but it has no other. It has no up or down. So let's look at the vertical components first. If we add the two forces acting on the body, the, the up and down forces, the vertical forces, we have F1 minus F2 is equal to the mass times the part of the acceleration in the vertical direction, which we said is zero. So F1 minus F2 is equal to zero. So these two forces cancel each other out. We can do the same thing in the horizontal direction. This time we have a force F3, and it's the only one acting, and it's equal to MA. And we do have a value for A, it's one meter per second. And we've got the two kilograms that I've um, uh, associated with this particular um, object. So our final uh, force, the force that's actually pulling this along or pushing this along is two newtons.